This lesson is titled Applying Thevenin's Theorem to Circuits that Contain Dependent Sources. In this lesson we will discuss two methods for finding a Thevenin equivalent circuit when the source circuit contains not just independent sources, such as the case for a previous lesson, but also contains dependent sources. As a specific example, let's consider this circuit which represents a model for a particular type of transistor amplifier called the emitter follower or common collector. We see a voltage controlled current source here. We see that it's a current source because of the arrow. We see that it's a dependent source because of the diamond shaped element. And the value of the current source depends on the voltage V sub pi across this resistor. This dependent source is modeling the combined effect of a transistor and an external power supply which is not explicitly shown in this circuit. Now, transistor is often referred to as an example of an active element. It allows for the possibility of amplifying voltages, currents, powers, and that would be in contrast to example for a resistor which can only absorb power. One is referred to as a passive circuit element, the other is an active circuit element. We might formally define that saying an active element would be an element that's able to furnish an average power greater to zero uh, when the average is taken over an infinite time interval, for example, uh, ideal voltage sources, op amps, and so forth. We'll talk about op amps later. And a passive element is an element that cannot supply an average power greater than zero over an infinite time interval. Now here's an example of a transistor such as might be used in that emitter follower amplifier. Notice that it has three terminals. Turns out to have an emitter, base, and collector from left to right. Now, it's very important to note, though, that in order to act as an active device, this transistor is going to require an external power supply. In other words, that dependent source is modeling the combined effect of the transistor and an external power supply, and it is in that sense that it is an active device. But let's return to the task of finding the Thevenin equivalent for this circuit, for this transistor amplifier. First thing to note is we cannot use the look back method for the Thevenin resistance where we turn off sources. Our derivation of that method was based on the assumption that only independent sources were present. That's not the case anymore. So how do we do determine the Thevenin equivalent? Well, let's go back to the basic concept of two linear circuits being equivalent from the rest of the circuit's perspective. Here we have the original circuit. It's a linear circuit. I versus V will have a linear relationship. We wish to find the Thevenin equivalent. This is also a linear circuit. Two points make a line. If we can accept that, then if we can show that both the original circuit and the Thevenin equivalent share two points, let's say the same short circuit current, that is when a short circuit is connected to the terminals, then they have the same value and the same open circuit voltage, they have the same value, then we can say that no matter what is connected to the circuit, it has to fall somewhere along this lines and the two circuits, that is the original circuit and the Thevenin equivalent, will be equivalent as far as the rest of the circuit is concerned. And this train of thought is going to provide us with the first of our two methods for finding Thevenin equivalent for circuits with dependent sources. First, find the voltage when there's an open circuit load, as we see here. And then, find the short circuit current if a short circuit is applied to the output. And then use that information to say that the Thevenin equivalent voltage source is V open circuit. The Thevenin equivalent resistance is the ratio of the open circuit voltage to the short circuit current way to proceed would be via node voltage analysis. We can identify a node here, a node here, a node here which includes both of these connection points. Let's call that node 1, node 2, node 3, and let's use this as our reference node which will be let's say node 0. Now since the emphasis here is on applying Thevenin's theorem to such circuits, I'm not going to go through the details of node voltage analysis now, but let me use SPICE to solve for those node voltages. And when I do that, SPICE tells me that the node voltage at node 3, which is the open circuit voltage, is 0.9417 volts. We know that that's the Thevenin equivalent voltage. 
Next, I'd like to use SPICE to find the short circuit current. However, SPICE is not at all happy with resistors that have zero ohms resistance. So I need to find another approach. SPICE has no problem with zero volt voltage sources. A zero volt voltage source is the same as a short circuit. It has zero volts across it no matter what the current. So let me use a zero volt voltage source and find the current through that source using SPICE. And that SPICE result is 16.15 milliamps. That is the information we needed to complete the Thevenin equivalent circuit. The ratio of the open circuit to I short circuit is 58.3 ohms. So the Thevenin voltage source is 0.9417 volts. The Thevenin resistance is 58.3 ohms. Now we said we would have a second method of finding Thevenin equivalent, and let's approach that next. Suppose one applies a test current source. So here's an independent current source of value I test to the terminals of a Thevenin equivalent. I test will flow through R sub T. There will be a voltage I test times R sub T across. So by Kirchhoff's voltage law going around the loop, minus V sub T minus I test times R sub T plus V is equal to zero. So the relationship between the voltage at the output terminals and the test current will be that V is equal to V sub T plus I test times R sub T. Following that train of thought, let's apply a test current to the original circuit that we are dealing with today. We'll determine the voltage across these output terminals as a function of the test current value and then use that to deduce the Thevenin equivalent voltage source and the Thevenin equivalent resistance. And this time, instead of using SPICE, let's actually go through a node voltage analysis solution. We have the three nodes in addition to the reference node, node 1, node 2, node 3. At node 1, that voltage is known by inspection. V1, the node voltage at node 1, is equal to 1 volt. So we'll write that down as the node voltage 1. Now at node voltage 2, we can write as a node voltage equation minus V1 times 1 over 300 plus V2 times the quantity 1 over 300 plus 1 over 1K minus V3 times the quantity 1 over 1 kilo ohm is equal to zero. There's no current sources flowing into node 2. And here we have written down that expression. For node 3, I will write down the node voltage equation by inspection as minus V2 times 1 over 1000 plus V3. There are two resistors here, 1 over 1000 plus 1 over 1000 is equal to I test plus 0 0.02 times V sub pi. V sub pi is not a node voltage, but V sub pi can be expressed in terms of node voltages as V2 minus V3. So let's replace V pi by the quantity node voltage 2 minus node voltage 3. With that, here are our node voltage equations at node 2 and at node 3. V1 we already know is equal to 1 volt. So 1 volt divided by 300 ohms is 3.33 milliamps. We can take that term to the right-hand side of the equation. <clears throat> As illustrated here, let's turn our attention to node 3. V2 can be taken to the left-hand side of the equation, and V3 as well can be taken to the left-hand side of the equation. So let's do that and rewrite these equations. And so, after collecting those terms, we have these equations for the node voltage. Remember that we want to seek a relationship between the output voltage V, which is V sub 3, that node voltage, and the test current. And if we add those fractions within the parentheses, we can say 0.0043 V2 minus 0.001 V3 is equal to 3.33 milliamps and minus 0.021 V2 plus 0.022 V3 is equal to I test. 
If we express that in matrix form, we can use Kramer's rule to solve for V sub 3. Solving for V3 then by Kramer's rule using the ratio of these two determinants, we get an expression for V3 related to a constant plus another constant times I test. It remains only to carry out those calculations, which yields the following. V sub 3, the node voltage at node 3 is 0.9417 volt plus 58.3 times the test current. From that, we deduce that the Thevenin voltage is, in fact, 0.9417 volts, and rounding off 58.3 is the Thevenin resistance. So, two methods of solving for the Thevenin equivalent circuit when we have dependent sources. Let's come back and take another look at the transistor amplifier circuit. I've redrawn it slightly, showing the VS and the 300 to represent a source circuit. Then here's the amplifier. We can think of this as a two-port interface circuit. And it's connected now to some load resistor. We found the Thevenin equivalent looking back from the load, so for any given value of R sub L, we can easily find the output voltage. By replacing the amplifier circuit with its Thevenin equivalent using voltage division, we would find that when Vs was 1 volt in the source circuit, Vl would be equal to 0.788 volts. Now we may ask ourselves, what kind of an amplifier is this? The output voltage is less than the input voltage. That's not a voltage gain. Indeed it's not, but the emitter follower is not really a voltage amplifier. It makes a great interface circuit for sources that can't provide much current, but it does provide current gain and power gain. The load current is going to be measured in terms of milliamps. It will be a certain number of milliamps. But if you use SPICE or other methods to analyze the circuit to look at the current coming in, you'll find that's on the order of microamps. So there is substantial gain in terms of the load current and the input current and also power gain. The power delivered to the load resistor is much higher than that provided by the source circuit. Where does that power come from? We could say it comes from this dependent source, but remember that dependent source represents the combined effect of a transistor and an external power supply. The external power supply is not explicitly shown, neither is the transistor, but the effect of both are incorporated in this dependent source. Well, this completes our lesson titled Applying Thevenin's Theorem to Circuits that Contain Dependent Sources. We found two methods of finding the Thevenin equivalent circuit. One was find the open circuit voltage, that's the Thevenin voltage. Find the short circuit current, and R Thevenin is equal to the ratio of the open circuit to I short circuit. That applies to circuits with dependent sources and those without dependent sources. It's a general approach. We noted that we cannot use the look-back method safely to find the Thevenin resistance when there are dependent sources in the circuit. Now I should say that we can also use Norton's theorem because the short circuit current is the Norton uh, current and of course the Thevenin resistance and Norton resistance are the same. We also discussed another method though that people often like to use in finding Thevenin equivalents in this situation apply a test current and cast the result in the algebraic form of the output voltage is equal to the Thevenin voltage plus the test current times a quantity which will be the Thevenin resistance.